I'm James Warda, Senior Director of Marketing and Communications with the Home Centered Care Institute. Welcome to a, another episode of HCCI Conversations With. Today we're talking with Dr. Elizabeth Davis with Rush University Medical Center and the Rush at Home House Calls Program. So welcome, Dr. Davis. Thank you for having me. Can you tell me a little bit more about your program there, Rush at Home? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we started Rush at Home about a year and a half ago, and our focus is for people living on the west side of Chicago who have difficulty coming into the office for primary care. So we provide full scope primary care for them in their homes. Um, and our patients, we see um, all, all ages of adults. Some of our patients are not um, elderly, they may be young or middle-aged, but they ha may have a, a number of chronic medical conditions that have made it such that it would be hard for them to leave their home. So obviously, um, right now, the big topic is, is COVID. So with COVID, can you tell, tell us a little bit about what you've been doing, what the House Call Program has been doing within the pandemic? Yeah, so from pretty early in the pandemic, we became very worried about our patients. As we all know, COVID has much higher mortality rates for people who are older, and many of our patients are older, and also has higher mortality rates for people with heart disease, diabetes, conditions like that, and many of our patients have those conditions as well. So once there was COVID here in Chicago, uh, we decided pretty early on to stop seeing patients in their homes and to convert to either video or telephone. And that was a hard decision to make because we really feel like seeing our patients in our home, we provide a much higher level of care. You can only do so much on, on a video screen, frankly, um, or on the telephone. But we just did not think it was safe with the COVID epidemic to go from the hospital to house to house to house to house and then back to the hospital. We were just too worried that we could be bringing it in, you know, or we could be picking it up from one home and bringing it to the next. Um, but at the same time, um, we are in close communication with our patients. Um, and we still, we, we, it's not like we have the ability to go to someone's home if they really need it, if there was something going on that couldn't be taken care of another way. While all that was going on, um, we also recognized that not only our patients, but there are many, many, many people in Chicago um, who have functional impairment and are not able to come into the hospital. And so at, at Rush, we have a a whole system for testing for COVID that involves people coming to a drive-through or a COVID clinic. Um, and working with our command center, our COVID command center at Rush, we reached out to them. We said, you know, we're used to going to people's homes. So we could test for COVID in homes um, for people who are exhibiting symptoms who don't need to come into the ER, um, but who would benefit from knowing whether or not they had COVID. So doctor, um, do you also um, do testing or visits in shelters in the city? Yeah, so we, we have developed um, an, an outbreak testing team focused on homeless shelters actually. It started at the beginning of the pandemic when um, the first nursing home in Illinois had someone test positive for COVID. And so, um, the Illinois Department of Public Health and Rush worked together to quickly test everybody in that nursing home. But when we at Rush got the call asking for some help with testing, um, the leadership at Rush turned to my team because as a house calls team, we are very used to going out into the community and going out into places where we've never been before to provide um, care. And so we put together very rapidly, it was on a Sunday, so within hours we put together a testing team and were able to test the entire uh, nursing home. And then after the experience uh, putting together the team testing at the nursing home, my colleagues and I became very involved with the Westside um, Homeless COVID Response Group in Chicago, which is a group of a number of different medical centers, community health centers, homeless care providers, city agencies, who've united to try to prevent um, COVID from having as big of an impact as it could in the homeless community. So um, in that context, um, we, with all these different organizations working together, put together a system of supporting shelters and screening shelters 
And when there started to be shelters with, where people tested positive for COVID, we realized that we needed to have a team that could test everybody in the shelter. So we put that together. It was a, it's a team uh, between Rush, UIC, and Heartland Alliance. Um, and what we do is if there's a shelter where a person in, who's been living there has tested positive for COVID, we go in and we test all the residents and all the staff. And what we found in the beginning was very high rates of people testing positive. And with that information, the reason why it's important is that we are then able to separate um, and the people who test positive and have them isolated away from the people who test negative. Um, and we're starting to be able to show through repeat testing that that strategy is working to halt these outbreaks in shelters. But I think this all ties back to house calls and primary care at home in a way, because again, I think the idea is we are going to where um, our patients are. We're going to them. Um, this is not something that could be done at a medical center. Um, and um, yeah, we're meeting people where they're at. So doctor, obviously you were saying, um, you know, you're going into places where there's, there's COVID and uh, you know, you're dealing with that every day. What is it that keeps you going? I think for all the people involved in this, myself included, um, I think it, there's this feeling of, I'm a healthcare professional. We're in the middle of a pandemic and I want to do something. You know, I really, I just want to do something. I'm, that helps with any anxiety I'm having about the pandemic um, to be able to go out there and, um, and make a difference. And I, this particular work with the homeless shelters um, and the home testing team um, really feels like a way to make an impact. Are there any stories, any like one or two kind of patients who just really stand out to you in all of this or one of yeah. your colleagues? One thing that I've been really struck by in doing the testing in homeless shelters um, is, you know, a lot of uh, the residents of the shelters who were testing um, have severe mental illness and maybe have had trauma before in their lives and are pretty terrified of getting the test done. Um, the test itself is fairly uncomfortable. You have to put a swab way in the back of somebody's nose. Um, and so I've been really struck by how caring um, a lot of the shelter staff are and how staff have, have literally held hands and coached people through it and talked them through it. And so whether it was the stigma of it all, making them afraid to get the test done or the discomfort of it, um, I've just been really struck by how these relationships kind of carry people through that moment. Has it brought your team closer together? Well, what's interesting is the team, the testing team is all volunteers. So it's actually different people from different institutions all the time. So it's Rush and UIC mainly. Um, but, um, but yeah, I think it has brought our, our Rush at Home team closer together too, um, um, because we're all part of that volunteer effort. Um, and so it's, it's been really cool. And, and besides working with those other groups as part of the outbreak mm -hmm. team, mm -hmm. are you partnering with any other entities in the city of Chicago? Oh, yeah. Um, well, there's so many. I think there's too many to name. Um, but yeah, so through this um, Westside Homeless COVID Response Group, um, there, I mean, it's city agencies like the Department of Public Health, um, for example, um, UIC, Rush, um, a number of the federally qualified health centers, um, for example, Heartland Alliance, um, a homeless, a number of homeless care providers. Um, so for example, a safe haven, um, all Chicago. I mean, there, there's like, there are a lot of organizations. And I think that's yeah. the only way we've been able to be effective, actually, is to have to set a table with a lot of different people at the table who have a lot of different areas of expertise. So as we look into the future, mm -hmm. what, what do you see for your program and, um, and what you might take away from all of this for your program? Yeah. Great question. Um, so for the Rush at Home program, we would love to start seeing our patients at home again. Um, I think those of us on the team and our patients all miss it. Um, and so we're in conversations and actually we've been in conversations getting advice from HCCI as well about um, trying to figure out how to safely do that or when we, you know, we don't know when, but you know, how will we know we're there kind of thing. 
And then unfortunately with the outbreak testing team, I am concerned that that is also gonna have to continue into the future. So we're actually um, looking at sustainability plans for that, because obviously it can't be volunteer forever, so. So Dr. Davis, uh, Rush at Home, we, we talked about um, how it is part of the, uh, the Rush health system there. And uh, you know, if, if a hospital uh, was considering having a house calls program, uh, as Rush uh, was at one time and then decided to implement it, what, uh, what would you tell them at this point? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's a key part of any healthcare system. I think in the past, it's been hard to pull off financially. So if the person I'm talking to is an administrator, I would acknowledge that, um, that it's hard. Um, but we know that it's a better form of care for people who are functionally impaired. And, and I would also tell them to think about the future of where we're going and that value-based contracts are a big part of that future and that home-based primary care can be um, a form of care that's good for patients. It's good for providers because it gives us satisfaction. Um, and it can also be good for the healthcare system because it can, um, improve performance in value-based contracts by preventing hospitalizations, preventing ED visits. So essentially by helping people stay healthier, everybody can win. What advice would you give to other providers with going through this right now, through the pressures of, of COVID, how maybe ways you take care of yourself and ways they might mm -hmm. take care of themselves? That's a great question. Um, I think it's very important that we all take care of ourselves. Um, unfortunately, this is gonna be going on for a while. So we, I think we all do need to do sort of check-ins um, to make sure that, that we are okay. You know, because as healthcare providers, if, if we get to a point where we're running ourselves too thin, um, we're not gonna be able to keep going for the marathon that this is gonna turn out to be. So, um, so I think that's that's important. I think I think it's important to do self care, you know, to the extent that we can. I mean, it's really hard right now, but to try to get sleep, to try to get exercise, to try to do all those things that we tell our patients to do. <laughs> HCCI has something called the I I Heart House Calls campaign. Okay. And we so every time we do one of these, mm -hmm. any videos we're doing, we're asking. So what is it? Why do you love house calls? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I love house calls for a lot of different reasons. Um, I love getting to know my patients' families and friends and neighbors and um, seeing the whole world that they live in. I love house calls because I think I am able to provide a much higher level of care for that particular patient than I would um, if, if they were coming into the office. Um, I'm able to go through their medications really carefully with them in the home. So I actually know what's going on with those medications, which sometimes can be very hard to do in the office. Um, and I just love getting to know my patients, you know, in their living room. <laughs> well, thanks, Dr. Davis. I really appreciate your being here with us today. Thank you for having me. It's been great to talk. And thank you to, to everyone who's watched. We, we really appreciate it um, and look for another episode of HCCI Conversations with coming soon and, and have a really good day. Take care. Bye.